and I'll pass it to Kansas to share what we ended up doing when there were no disasters. Yeah, thank you. The other thing I just wanted to add in is this is our experience, right? And again, our experiences were specifically with batteries um, and our community and our, as we talked about, our accessing our logistical needs and wants for our community and what that means. Um, but this also applies to, again, any, anything that you may be collectively trying to share in the commons. So the next thing that kind of on our journey that kind of progressed was a lot of talk and discussion also about exploring where the storage and transportation of the batteries would take place and how that would work. So we just talked about a little bit about how we procured our batteries. Again, some members gave them to us. Your story may be very different, but procuring the batteries is the first step of understanding your logistical system and infrastructure you will need, right? Because you know how much they weigh, you know how much they can potentially power, their dimensions, and et cetera. And by, for us, again, there was a lot of talk about how we, oh, there should be cars to move it. All of that talk is very important. But again, at the end of the day, a lot of it was through trial and error and fine tuning the approach based on just collective feedback and experience. We focused on creating a transport and system that was, that really embodied distribution, community ownership, but safety and reliability as well. We decided to store batteries at individual members' houses to support the distribution, uh, obviously considering accessibility and pro proximity to potential power out areas. Again, these things are people, especially initially, we were just guessing, right? We, we, we just had one experience and, and people had a whole bunch of ideas, but at the end of the day, we didn't really have any hard facts or t test cases, right? That helped us prove out how to, to efficiently do that or what was best for our community. So again, I you're going to be hearing this a lot, but it really, you, we're going to em emphasize like trying out and experimenting just to see what happens. But I, additionally, we also aim to store the battery securely, right? We wanted security and storage to be, was also talked about in a concern because we wanted to make sure that it was accessible, not just maybe directly to members, but maybe to friends of members, right? So they know their friend has having experiencing a power outage, right? How would that look and how do things like that play into the storage and even the transportation of the batteries or whatever you're maintaining? So some just key takeaways, right? You're based on what you're trying to store you're, and your community, you're going to have different needs and requirements. The way that you move them are going to have different requirements weight, size, right? So in our case, it's cars. We use cars mostly because they were big egg crates. They were pretty heavy, but that didn't stop people from thinking. Again, this is why having the actual battery is important. Maybe we could build a cart for bikes and that is all possible. It just depends on what you're working with. Again, thinking about what your community's needs are and what re the reality of what your community has is super important. And actually, I'll pass it back to you, Chris. Or I guess we'll pause for questions. <laughs> we'll pause for any questions on this briefly and open it up the space for a second. And I'll, I'll share that one one example story from what Kansas was sharing was actually one of our battery collective members was in a meeting, on um, some co-housing meeting. And then one participant didn't have to have their camera off because their power just went out. So then she was like, oh, you should. we have a battery collective. You should use it. And so she texted one of us and one of us texted another person. And then we, another person like said, I am, I'm able to move the battery, but the person has the battery is not there. So then there was like a whole coordination that happened just through a, a bunch of text threads that happened. And I think that actually happened on Slack was what we used at one point, but we'll get to that soon. But the idea like that we could just know you have exactly where to move it and how close it is. We can identify where the closest battery was and then who's actually available nearby and, and then to move it. It's obviously pretty small scale, but it's a good place for us to start. And yeah, again, the security is tied in there with accessibility, making sure your security and needs and requirements are met as well, right? Because you may want people to have 
having a padlock accessible, right, with a code so any member could potentially come and access the battery is important in logistics because you never know who will be available. So considering the security, because you want it to be secure, but also considering the accessibility is a balancing act. Uh, I wanted to call that out. So Yeah, totally. And also, I, I mentioned in the chat that the power shutoff data was not public, and most of the power shutoff was really happening because of they call it the uh, PSPS, like public safety power shutoff. We call it profiting shareholder profit power shutoff. It's really just a way for them to shut off some convenient substations to, to re reduce the risk of fire. And they did not have that information public at all. So when we decided to move the battery to areas that needed power, and then we just let it sit there. So when the power comes on, they become the charger that, that we call the babysitter of the batteries then we now have the batteries where shutoff tends to happen. So then we're literally moving where the investor owned utilities were shutting power off when we don't have the, the data. Whereas if we have a centralized place that holds it all the time, you cannot plan for where to go at all. So we're able to just let it move to wherever the shutoff was happening because it was just completely organic and they would just live wherever the people are holding the battery or using the battery lives. So with that, I'll move on to the next stage. As I mentioned, after we figure out the storage and the transportation and all this stuff, we were able to move the batteries a few times, but then there was no disaster at all, which is really great. But at the same time, we're all planning for a major disaster. And so it, it was like a huge mismatch and we didn't know what to do. And now all of our members just sat there waiting for terrible things to happen, which is not good. And how do we continue to engage with our members to feel like they're part of something? We, we started to ponder how to prioritize our resources during non-emergency time. So for our solution, we created a testing brigade to understand battery logistics, operations and transportation, all the things that Kansas mentioned. If you just have the battery locked up somewhere, with the padlock, but nobody's using it, everyone can forget about it. So we need to keep moving it around. And we created this testing brigade. So all of our members get to just sign up and move the battery as if you have power shut off. So then now when you don't have shut off, you can pretend that there's a shut off and then think about what do I need? Okay, I need um, air filter because it's, it's a smoke season. I also need a fan because it's really hot. Like people start to think about these things a lot more when in reality, most of the time, when you ask people, what do you need a battery collected for? What do you need battery for? Most people's answer, in my experience, is I need a generator. Okay, if I give you a generator, what are you going to power? A uh, generator? That's generally people's answer. People just cannot think about energy because we just use energy so mindlessly. We don't know, like, when the power goes out, this is what we need until you have a battery at home and you pretend that there's no power and you can start plugging things in. And as Kansas mentioned in the podcast, like he tried it out and realized, oh no, I can't use a water heater for the battery. Like it was a great experience for us to actually practice in our body to know, oh, when power shutoff happens, I shouldn't be drinking coffee. I think Eugene shared this earlier. So these things that we get to try out when there's non-emergency. So there, we came up with this idea mostly just from just hanging out, laughing and practicing democracy, imagining things and sharing what we learned together. It was really wonderful. So for us, a big key takeaway in that chapter was we want to lean into trust that we have with the group. And one big thing was there was a huge voice in that group was like, no, we cannot. We have to prioritize the batteries for medical use only and for people who have serious needs and we focus so much on these prioritization because we're getting ready for a massive disaster but when we in reality there was none we just got stuck and then we couldn't use it for events that we can activate people to look at the batteries so we found decided you know what we should bring the bring it out as a testing brigade we should bring out to outdoor events so people can start to look at the battery and think about it more so a big key takeaway for us was really trying not to get bogged down by the obsession with setting up guardrails that some bad actor is going to take advantage of the batteries. That's something that we experienced was people just really wanted to make sure nobody's going to take advantage of it. 
nobody's going to prioritize it for catching up on their TV show when somebody needs it for breathing machine. Like we're really hypothetically like thinking about how do we make sure this doesn't happen? And it really feels a lot of trauma reaction. And what we learned to do was to lean into the trust we have for each other. And that's, it's easy to say, but it's really hard to get done, but we have to lean in and just encourage the community to say, hey, understand there might be bad actor, but among all of us, can we just agree that we're going to do this for the best of our community so we can start moving the battery, start testing it out so that we can actually get the stuff out as far as we can and truly leap into the faith, into the faith for love and abundance for our community and not be worried that somebody's going to come in and take advantage of things for silly things. So we tried out testing brigade and putting it out on events.